eyes in Abbas. He is here. He is Palestinian. And we're going to go there. So you're feeling the rage from the imbalance, from the injustice that's occurring. And now you want to project that or ventilate that. So it ends up being projected at people who are silent. It ends up being projected at your family like it has generationally for me. I was asked to facilitate a men's retreat. Who did he get to co-facilitate? An Israeli. The closing ceremony, we're all standing in circle, arms around each other, all standing in circle. And all of a sudden, this like wave of awareness just hits me. As I'm standing with my arm around him, I'm like, holy shit. And when it came time to serve the light, it brought us together. And as I'm holding him, I'm like getting hit with this wave of awareness and the tears start coming down my eyes. And I look at him and I'm like, dude, this is what our people have been praying for. This is what the world has been praying for since the beginning of this, of, of everything. Men, the world is asking for you to stand up, to show up, to move forward in a new way. The pathway of embodied leadership is here. And where we're going, we go together. Using time-tested masculine frameworks for modern men who are ready to take ownership of their life. Guided by directions, elements, growth edge challenges, weekly rituals, and the seven pillars of embodiment. Train directly with the leaders of Sacred Sons at Prime Leadership. Grow alongside your brothers in Leadership Training 1. Or grow at your own pace with the Embodied Masculine Course. Because together, we are more. Join this global movement today. Happy New Year, Soul Family. Adam Jackson here with the first episode of the Sacred Sons podcast in this so-called year of 2024, but we know it's not 2024 out here. This is the now. This is everything. This is it. And this now is all we have. Restarting now. I know in the spiritual world, and you know, you know, eyes in in the spiritual world, we can't say anything. You can't even say Happy New Year without somebody correcting you. You know what I'm saying? Happy Fake New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy Fake New Year. It is about attuning to the cycles, the death and rebirth, life and legacy. Why are you here? You have another chance. You woke up today. You saw the sunrise. Let's get it. Let's go. So with that. To all my brothers and sisters out there, peace, assalamu alaikum, shalom, kaverim, imla, kesh, ari, aho, matakwiasan, awen, amen, I'm in. And today's guest, eyes in. He is here. He is Palestinian. And we're going to go there. We're going to feel it. Yeah, I want to say it. And we're going to go into it. We're going to go into that death and rebirth, into the infinite cycles here. So with that, our guest today, Aizen Abbas. He's a devoted student and teacher at the Great Mystery School, and he is guiding others to return home to themselves through sacred union. Please welcome Aizen Abbas. Much love, Brother Adam. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for everybody <sighs> listening and tuning in. I think, uh, like you said at the beginning, before we started recording, this has been a long time coming, and I'm so honored and grateful for you to open up the space for me, bro, and ready to dive in. Yeah, man. You know, as a sacred son, it's uh, it's a part of my mission to find the others. Mm. You know, and I'm watching, I've been seeing you, I've been seeing Sister Shanti out there creating the memes, giving us the sacred cynicism that we all need, giving us that sacred medicine. We'd need it in these times. <laughs> 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 yeah. In these times, you know, so I want to invite us to drop into these times and to really tune into what is alive for each of us. So with that, I want to ask us to take a deep breath for ourselves. <sighs> Tuning into this now moment, eyes in on this beautiful day, what is most alive within you? What is most alive within me is just deepening my faith and my trust 
and where I find myself and where I'm being guided. Um, spent the last couple of years in Costa Rica with my queen, building, creating, cultivating, and um, we're being led somewhere else outside of Costa Rica. I won't, I won't speak on exactly where we're going to be landing, but it's, uh, it's a big shift for me. And uh, your boy has never resisted something so strongly in a long time. Wow. And, and I'll be honest with you, it broke me down. And I've had the flu for like four days and I'm sitting there <laughs> in bed. And I'm like, yo, how did I get myself the flu? Because as we know, everything is an energy. And it's like, oh, you're resisting the fuck out of this move, aren't you? To the point where your whole body just shut down. I'm like, oh, my God. So what's alive for me is is deepening my faith and my trust and and just surrendering to to where God has taken us. And yeah, so wow. I'm coming out of that flu right now. So I'm like, all right, man, you, your resistance is up. You sweated it out. You fluted it out. Let's go. I'm so curious. I'm going to see if I can suss together some clues about where this might be during our conversation. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. That resistance, man. Yeah. Adam checking in. I'm checking in with surrender, which is the antithesis of the resistance, right? And so the surrender, I'm, five days ago, our firstborn daughter, Winona Lee Jackson, came into the world. And Hannah, her mother, she was so powerful. She made it look easy, bro. I mean, I mean, she made it look, it was so natural. She, Winona was born at home. Um, her brothers were here to witness it. Holland, three-year-old Holland was right by the tub watching. And to see, to see her face first come, to see her eyes open for the very first time, I just, it's so special. And the, the real powerful piece, because it, it is ceremony. Birth, I, I don't know if you've participated in a birth or if anybody out there listening has, but especially in a home birth, we prepared the space. We built the altar for her to come. You know, we, we, we put the gifts down. We laid the prayers down. We, we prepared it. And so for her to come in this, this loving way, it was really like the birth of her um, that, that we desired. But then to see, to actually meet her and to see her and to see, like, to see the faces of all women, of all women in the face of my daughter, like, that is real. There is, there's something that's, that's so real about that feminine essence um, that women embody. And so I got to, I get to witness and experience it in my daughter, Winona. And she came with a thunderous spirit here in Southern California. As she came, the rains came, the waters came and crashed on the beaches all over Southern California on that day, bro. She was born at 2.36 a.m. And by the news at 7 a.m., the waters are rising and the, the beaches are all being washed out. And a part of that for me, I do, I work with a lot of men, bro. I do this, this sacred sons game is, it's, it's beautiful and it's real. And, and a part of me hopes that all of this work I am doing is to prepare myself, to prepare my sons, and to prepare these men in this world for her so that she can walk in this world with safety and peace and dignity and love, ultimately. So that's why I'm here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue the mission, uh, you know, in her honor. And that's, that's where I'm at as a father. I'm a father of four, and this year I'm going to be 44. So I'm in, <laughs> I'm in with that. And, and it's all praises to God, to great spirit. And, you know, it's not all about life. Because I've, I've also been on the other side of that. I've also been one who's had the experience of a miscarriage, the experience of loss. And that's something that you, you recently posted about your experience in closing out last year. Just on the flip side of what I'm sharing, is there anything about that that you would like to share, knowing that I've also had that experience? First and foremost, all praise be to the Most High for bringing in your daughter, healthy mother, healthy your wife so brave and courageous to really like i'm just i'm just humbled and to to witness so many women like 
the bravery and the courage to rewrite the story of how these souls are going to come in. It's like the, the, the fear programming that they're breaking f through and breaking free from. It's like, I can't even fathom what's been layered upon them to now like bring these souls in, in this frequency of just like courage and love and faith and trust. It's just like, whoa. I want to ask you one thing and I appreciate you bringing this up, but cause I'm super curious, like, because you're, you're, you're such a powerful leader. Like, what do you feel this means for your bloodline <laughs> to bring this soul in this woman in your daughter in with three sons, her brothers, the sons of Adam. It's dude. It's so mythical. It's all mythical with me. And the symbol that I wear literally every day you know this triangle symbol it's, it's everywhere it's all around us and so i have three sons that that make up that outside triangle and then winona comes in the middle you know as that feminine to hold. so the geometry is there the sacredness of of this of this union is there and my bloodline's carried on I already, I already established that with my three boys, right? Um, with Winona, it's, it's just what I said. I think, um, I think what it's inviting in for me specifically is to um, align with the feminine, bring more feminine work into my work, which is, which is happening not like on a one-on-one -on -one level. I'm talking about on the collective level, really calling it in, calling in that alignment because I'm her guardian, because, I, because she is now my, she's now my North Node, bro. She's the compass. She's the anchor. Every, like, <laughs> I'm already one who is, you know, preaching about accountability and, and integrity and these type of things. But this is a new level. There's a new level uh, of, of, of integrity for myself. I think that's what it's calling in for myself. And what does that do cellularly for my bloodline? Because my boys are going to experience it too. Man. <laughs> and, and the gift that she gives not just you but every man that will end up working with you and learning from you from that recalibration of her very existence recalibrating your entire experience of reality and everything that you now touch and all the men that you help it's like yo she's already shifted so much in the collective just yes. from just from coming in just from being here Dude. Just from being here. And Hannah's, she's just in the next room. She's so in love. Uh, Winona, uh, she came out. She's jet black hair. My Two of my sons have blonde hair because Hannah's yeah. blonde. So it's kind of yeah. funny because I'm like this dread dude walking around. Two blonde babies. Um, <laughs> two, my, my golden lions, I call them. But um, Winona, she came with jet black hair and just, phew, she's just, she's just so beautiful. And this is all we have, right? And so I, I, I also am one who I don't really need to go understand what happens a thousand years from now, but I, I definitely know I'm here to plant those seeds. You know, I don't need to know how it's going to happen. I just need to trust that it is happening. Yeah. And how special it is too, that your wife, cause I don't, I know, I know you've heard this as well and I don't want to butcher it, but basically like a girl will carry all her eggs when she's in her mother. And so your wife is already carried a generation to come within her. And it's just like, this is mythical. We're, we're living prophecy. Well, in, in this room next door is Hannah's mother. So Hannah's mother literally had Winona's eggs in her, bro. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Just so much, man. So much respect for these women who without them, life would not exist, you know? Period. And, Period. Yeah. And, and maybe that segues into what you asked me in terms of the ceremony we went through back in February. And just a lot of depth of reverence to, to all the women who have given birth to death as well and that being a necessary a necessary aspect of this game that oftentimes gets overlooked just even i was i was in ceremony sitting with grandmother a few weeks ago and as i'm sitting there you know i have never shared this really but as i'm sitting there one of the medicine keepers she started to sing and i realized 
I never truly grieved the fact that I would never hear my daughter's voice. And it just hit me and I just started weeping and sobbing and I was like, oh my God. In the land of being an ascended master and having it all figured out and fully having full surrender and trust. And it was like, yo, you haven't even let yourself fully grieve this ceremony. And then grandmother Aya, she showed me, she said, you know, even the word miscarriage, it carries with it this energy of like, it was a mistake. Mistake, yeah. Misspoke, misstep, miscarriage. It was like wrong or a, yeah, it was a mistake. And although, although we experienced an extremely undesirable event, there was this overwhelming sense of peace the day or two after of like knowing that the soul chose this path of fulfillment and that there was so much perfection behind it all that we would not be able to have vision into until the pieces started to re reveal themselves. But yeah, the, the whole thing was so intense, man. So intense almost about a year ago. And like, we're still deep in that ceremony. Yeah. And we, and we can't know, right. We can't know exactly the inner workings um, and, and prayers and blessings and all positivity and love to Amira. You know, we, we may not hear her voice. She can hear us. She can hear us. She's with us. She's with you. You know what I'm saying? And um, I had a similar experience and we, we named, it was also our daughter, you know, and this is, this is before Holland and Johan came. So this is before we, Hannah and I had any children and um, we named her Rose. We did a burial and, and out of that, that Rose, now I got my two golden lions and Winona is here. So I can't know. We can't know. And we can't judge it. Uh, we can certainly grieve it. We have to. I think it's important to acknowledge and have like this normalization for men to be able to talk about these things. It's time. The women need us at a, at a new level. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And, and part of, I think what, um, I like even start, I'm feeling the emotions coming through me right now, you know, <clears throat> part of it too is like, you want to be strong for your woman. And, um, which is why the work that you and I are doing is so important because like without this arena of men's work, like you can't go and put this on your woman. I'm, I'm sorry. I know there's going to be some people that disagree with this and there's going to be triggering and there's going to be women who say, no, I want to, I want my man to express to me how he's feeling and to process with me and all this. And like, the truth is, no, you fucking don't because what some of these men are carrying the grief that needs to be processed, the anger that needs to be processed, the truth that he needs to hear come out of his own being in order for him to just like, okay, it was said, like that can only happen around a group of men who are ready <laughs> to hold him through that. Absolutely. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's like, that's why, you know, lone wolf season has to be over. Like the, to the men listening here, if you're not surrounded by a group of men who will hold you up through the darkest of times and just like witness you go through your alchemical process, no matter what that is, like you probably will not make the next, make it through the next few years. Like, Find your tribe, whatever that is. And like, I'm, I'm grateful because my men's circle fell up the fellowship like three days after the, the miscarriage, you know, I showed up and held space and they held space for me. And they were like, yo, do you really want to do this? We can postpone this meeting, bro. Like, don't, don't worry about it. And I was like, no, I need no, this. I need this. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm coming in and I spent the first 15 minutes of that call just crying in front of them. And these men were just silent and I had no, I couldn't say nothing. I had no words. All I had was tears and they just sat there and held that, you know, and then, and then we opened up the space and they spoke over me and prayed over me and stuff like that. And over my wife and the experience and we moved through it a little bit, but yeah, surround yourself with some men that can really like walk with you and stand with you through your alchemical processes. Well, let me ask you from this perspective, what happened when you went back to hold space back to be in the, the, the container with your wife.
because you were with the men, like, were you able to show up better? I was, I was able to show up better. There was the, the aspect of me that held my wife tenderly that really like, like witnessed this woman go through such an intense experience and like this bonded us to such a degree um and and it like made us like truly truly best friends like it unlocked this we were able to access this like layer of existence with each other that wasn't there before but with the way life is you know i had um shortly after because we were staying at my cabin in on vancouver island when all of that went down and we left like about a week later went back to costa rica i had king's council which is my men's immersion that i hold on the equinoxes and so i had 12 men flying into costa rica to the dragon house at our at our property to to go through this like intense experience and it was like right back into the work and so i was still i was like yeah basically put right back into the whole thing into the mix of things into my work show up hold the space whatever and like again this past uh ayahuasca ceremony it was like i really saw how closed off my heart has been since that yeah how closed off my heart has been to my wife to myself <clears throat> to god It's been tough, man, you know? Yeah. And it was like, holy shit, my heart's been closed off. Like, even as loving as I am, as open as I am, as, as everything, it's like, yeah. Like a father who lost his daughter, you know? Like, have you sat with that? Have you truly held that? Yeah. And uh, I feel I'm finally coming to terms with the impact that it's had on me, you know, and just realizing, yeah, man, I've been, part of me has been closed off to my wife, like harsh on her, harsh on myself, harsh on people around me. And it's, like, I, yeah. so it's been a, it's been a real process. It's been a real ceremony, dude. Like I'm still going through the alchemical process. My wife and I are still, healing through this, loving each other through it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing that you said in this piece that you shared that really hit me, that, that, that really took me back was that this was another Palestinian baby lost this year. Yeah. Like when I, when I saw that, I was like, damn, like that, you know, that perspective and I imagine a lot of the anger is coming as a result of, of not only this very real situation that's in your, in your present experience, but also what's happening around the world, what's happening in the Middle East, specific what's happening in Gaza. Yeah. You've said, like, it's all been said, like, it's, it's still happening. The reality is this is still happening. Babies are still dying. You know? I, I don't want to exhaust you. It's not like that for me. But like, where are you at now? You know, because we're, we're here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on one hand, I've been preparing for this my entire life. Oh, wow. Tr truly getting ready to speak on this and shine a light on this and be a voice for my people. I've been getting ready for this my entire life. And it was through... Um, a deep breathwork journey in, in, in last March where I started to have these revelations and downloads as to what was happening in, in Palestine on a spiritual side and how this was, this has been like this, a multidimensional attack on consciousness. And it was slowly starting to be dripped to me throughout the year. And it all, it all was like preparing me for, stepping forward and speaking on this when October 7th happened and all of that. But where am I at now with it? It's like, man, I've gone through such a roller coaster of, of my own process. Like 
the generational trauma that came through from this. Yeah. It was dense. It was dense. And there was times where through the past like 80, 85 days or however long it's been, but specifically in the first month, month and a half, there were, mo- where there were mo- mornings where I'd wake up and I'd be ready for war. This energy, this, this war mongering, divisive, hateful energy that's existing within me was like, let's go to war. Let's tear some people apart. Let's fucking go at this right now. And it's like, I had to do so much clearing and centering to be able to come now and like speak from a grounded place to my community and not feed into what is clearly on display here, killing children. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of moments where it was like wanting me to lose myself, lose myself to my own emotions, lose my, lose my reputation and how I'm speaking and all the shit. And it's like, all right, you're lost in the sauce, which is very real. Come back. Like the last thing your people need is another stereotypical emotional Arab getting upset and like speaking over this in a way that's not from clarity. Like you have the ability to speak on this. So you have the fucking responsibility to do it properly. And so you are you will not lose yourself to this. And it's interesting. Like, I don't know if there's a proper way to speak about this. How do you, how do you speak about uh, something so devastating properly? I, I think the anger is necessary as a, as a, as a motivating force for you to do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Right. In the moment. And I'm not advising to like lean in to the anger in ways that are unsafe for yourself or anyone else. Yeah. But I want to acknowledge that the anger is very real. I know, I, I'm, and I know that because everyone's feeling it. For sure. Inside, outside, all sides. If 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 what's happening on this planet right now isn't bringing up anger in you, that's probably a place to to check in with. I would, yeah. I would imagine. For sure, man. And the thing is, too, like sacred rage is sacred when it's harnessed in the specific space it wants to be focused. Because, like, our rage is is highlighting to us a perceived imbalance, a perceived injustice that's happening. Right. And so the thing is what, 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 when you say, when, when I said not to like focus it in a wrong way, it's like, there's a lot of people who are focusing it on why are other people silent? I know. So you're feeling the rage from the imbalance, from the injustice that's occurring and now you want to project that or ventilate that at some some in some manner in some place. So it ends up being projected at people who are silent. It ends up being projected at people who are brainwashed. It ends up being projected at people who are still operating from their own trauma and their shadow. It ends up being projected at your family like it has generationally for me. And, and in, in some cases, it ends up getting projected onto a group of people or a religious group of people where th- that's not where it needs to go. Like we have to yeah. be able to separate people in their beliefs and their faith from governments and, and military action. These, exactly. these things are not the same. No. And that's part of the plan is to make it so they look the same so that you start getting upset at your neighbor because they carry a different ideology than you or they're So, so the thing is like these, these, well, like you said, let's just get into it. Like Zionism as a form of consciousness, forget political ideology. It's a form of consciousness, a fascist communist kind of like this corrupt war mongering form of consciousness that can only exist through division and hatred and occupation and, and brutality, right? It's hiding behind Judaism. It's hiding behind a group of people which is ironic because the only time the Zionist regime will refer to Palestinians as humans is when they're calling them human shields. And so, and so Zionism as a form of consciousness in order to manifest in this physical reality, it's hiding behind people. And so the one thing too, is like, we have to be vigilant to see beyond the people, see beyond the human shields 
right? And see beyond essentially like one of the things that came to me too is like, look, it's easy to get angry at a group of people who this energy, this warmongering entity is hiding behind. But we would potentially all be in that position if we were them. You know, they say, don't judge a man until you walk a mile in his shoes. Well, like, have we walked even five steps in each other's shoes? So it's going to be important, like, to harness this, this rage to the common enemy that we all have. That very thing, that very force that feeds off of war, feeds off of fear, feeds off of hatred and division. Because it's been feeding off of us for a long ass time beyond 75 years, beyond this lifetime, across all lifetimes and timelines, it's been feeding off of us. And so there is a, there is a correct way to speak on this, you know, with it's, it's like, it's like being very in tune with the subtle energies and, and knowing that what you're feeding into with how you're speaking on things because the last thing I want to be is another account that just throws people in emotional turmoil. The last thing I want to be is another voice to just have you lost in your own emotions and the storylines of what's playing out in the world stage, knowing that we're all being fucking used as pawns. Yes. Yeah. To perpetuate the stories that are out there versus going inside, cultivating the truth of our inner essence and bringing it from that place. Yeah. Not to regurgitate what, what we read on whatever mainstream channel, who knows what their intention is or who paid for it or what's behind it. I ran into something something similar, but I've made a, a shift in my own and for Sacred Sons is like we're gonna tell our we're gonna continue to st- to tell our story from our perspective and from our own media. Mm-hmm. Because to to share something that was not captured you know, by us or whatever that is. It's like, it's only going to, this problem is only going to get exacerbated when we're taking in outside information that we don't know if it's true or not. And then we're allowing it to affect us. And then we're, we're projecting it back out and, and amplifying a message that is not our own. It doesn't come from our hearts. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to bring this piece because I think this is important to say here. It's not all kumbaya. It really isn't. A lot of times, I think we're, we're going to talk about oneness because you made a you made an interesting post about that. But you know, we've had some experiences recently uh, as Sacred Sons at our events where we've had Israeli men, Palestinian men in the same containers in the same circles, and it's it's brought up a lot. And it's this is what I've seen. I've seen. Palestinian man and a former IDF soldier pray together. I've actually seen that. I've seen I've seen men not want to step in because of their fear projection of other men in those same circles. People holding themselves back because of this thing that we're talking about. Like how do we how do we even approach this topic where where maybe someone feels powerless against the other? Or, or, or actually in fear for their own life. Listen, I had, my, I had some Jewish friends call me and tell me that I was putting their life in danger by asking for a ceasefire, for calling to an end to war. You know what I'm saying? And I had a Palestinian brother also tell me that he was unsafe because in his container there was an Israeli man. So these things are really happening. We're doing the work. We're, we're bringing these, these, these men together and we're, we're at the tip of the spear here. Yeah. So what I want to what I want to know from you, because this is a part of your DNA, and I love the way that you said that maybe this is a part of your mission is to bring this through in a good way and to speak on behalf of of your blood and on behalf of these innocent children and people. Last December, December uh, of twenty twenty two, um, I was in Dubai. I was asked to facilitate a men's retreat and 
from a very dear brother of mine. He was like a student of mine for a few years. And he was like, I'm putting on this men's retreat in the region. Come through. There's nothing like this in the Middle East. I'm like, yo, fucking 100% down. Let's go. Who did he get to co-facilitate? An Israeli. And I didn't even know that. And when he first told me, hey, this guy is coming to co-facilitate, I'm like, perfect. And we sat down in the first opening call, oh, where are you from? And then he said, Israel. And I was like, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> like, all right, now I'm already feeling shit come up within me. Like, yo, what the fuck? There okay. it is. There's that, there's that con- the war on consciousness. Exactly, right because away. Because it, right? it's, it's, it's within all of us. It's, it's within us. It's within us. It's not outside of me. It's within me. Right away, it was like pulling me apart from myself. And so, okay, I'm trusting. We, we, I, I, I can see that he brings his own skill set that's completely different than mine. And like, okay, so we get to Dubai. He's holding workshops. I'm holding workshops. Everything's fine. He's a very sweet, gentle soul. We connected. Everything was beautiful. The closing ceremony, we're all standing in circle arms around each other, all standing in circle. And all of a sudden, this like wave of awareness just hits me. Mm. As I'm standing with my arm around him, I'm like, holy shit, this is it. (laughs) This is what everybody's been praying for, dude. Exactly. And when it came time to serve the light, it brought us together. I didn't even have to choose. He didn't choose. We didn't have a choice in the matter. We both said, yes, we're coming to do this work. And when it came time to serve the light, it brought us together. And as I'm holding him, I'm like getting hit with this wave of awareness and the tears start coming down my eyes. And I look at him and I'm like, dude, this is what our people have been praying for. This is what the world has been praying for since the beginning of this, of, of everything. This is what the mothers have been praying for. This is what people have been praying for. These are the, the, the most intimate conversations in somebody's chest with God. And in this moment, it's fulfilling and manifesting. And we're doing this work with men, like in the region. It was deep grid work, dude, at that point. Exactly. It was like, holy shit. And it still remains as one of the greatest moments of my life. And although it's just like, it's just a, it's just a, a moment. It's a, it's a fraction of a glimpse of it's, but I feel it's also an anchor point that's connected and tethered to all these probable timelines. And if we can really like come back into this knowing of like, this is possible, man. And it true liberation can only happen with us standing next to each other because there is a common enemy throughout this whole thing. And it's definitely not, the man who's co-facilitating at a men's retreat with me, or it's definitely not the man in my container who showed up, received the same signal to come and do this work. And now I'm, I'm in a sacred son's container with this other man. It's not, that's not the common enemy. So this is like, there is, it's not just about there's hope. It's about that when it, when, when we really tune in to the frequency of what we're here to do to anchor in this light to anchor in this truth beyond the distortions beyond the brainwashing beyond the programming like we will find our way together and i truly as well believe at the beginning you said yo just bring it all i don't care if it triggers people whatever i truly believe and i'll say this palestinians right now the ones in Gaza, the ones who they're trying to wipe off the map, exile from Gaza in order to not see anymore, right? Because really, as long as those people are there living in that concentration camp, you'll never have peace in your heart as an Israeli. You can dissociate from reality and you can pretend like everything's fine and you can go to raves in Tel Aviv and you can do all the things you want to do in normalized society. But as long as those people are living in a fucking concentration camp, you will never have peace in your heart and you will have to live so far out of truth in order to dissociate from that reality that it'll be akin to selling your soul. And so the Palestinians living in Gaza right now under those conditions, they are a direct reflection to the brutal occupation that the Israelis are under. 
spiritually. They're just seeing it physically. And so they need each other for their own liberation. Because wipe all Palestinians off the map tomorrow. Then what? Then what? Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So the energy of all of this is in the land and is not going anywhere. It's in the land and it's in the blood, bro. Because what you're describing happened to these people themselves. Yes. To the Israeli people. This literally happened to them. And we know hurt people hurt people. This plays out on the micro and the macro, collectively, culturally. And, and we're seeing it play out where the, the previous people who were occupied have become the occupier. This has played out throughout history over and over and over. Right? Yeah. I don't know the answer, but is it an opportunity? Is this an opportunity to like... To, to break this cycle. This is a big one. So this is the thing. There's layers to this that many of us may not be able to see. Yeah. But there is, there is a karmic agreement right now playing out between Israelis and Palestinians to, to show humanity the brutal occupation we are under. And so the Israelis are, pr are, are playing their role perfectly as the occupier to show you the physical manifestation of this mind virus that has been plaguing humanity. And the Palestinians are then this physical representation of humanity. And so you have the collective shadow, which is represented as the, uh, the Israeli Zionist state. And then you have the will to live, the will to perpetuate life represented through the Palestinians who have literally nothing but their connection to God and their will to continue existing. So you have two sides of the same coin here, the collective shadow and the collective will to live on display for us to see because this is happening within ourselves. Right. This is playing out as humanity's liberation within us. This force that we're seeing killing children, this, because like, we can all agree, no matter what you believe, no matter what side you're on, no matter what religion, whatever ideology, we can all agree that only hijacked souls can kill children and massacre children. And so this that is playing out in front of us, like, it doesn't just exist there. And it didn't just show up now. Right. But I think it's important that we're seeing it. You know, all this technology has led to this moment of near singularity where we can all be on the front lines. We can all be on the front lines of war with the, with the click of a, a button. You know what I mean? The fact that we're seeing it, the, the fact that we're seeing it brings it into our reality. Well, Again, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to share with you just the layers that, have, that I'm, I'm seeing this with and share with the people listening. So on one hand, I feel like the reason why we're able to see it is because of all the work we've been doing to see mm. our purpose. And so all the shadow work that we've been doing as a collective, like all the work your, your men have been doing to like face their own darkness and bring it to light and be in truth, all of a sudden now they're able to see this so clearly in front of them. Right. Right. Not That's, all. Not all. Yeah. Some, not all. No, not all. Not <laughs> all. And some of us will see it and still externalize it and think that I'm separate from that. That right. that doesn't, that capacity for darkness does not exist within me. And so they still are separate from what they see, although this realm of mirrors is showing us ourselves. So we have now the, our ability to see not our ability to see this darkness beyond what is just being portrayed to us in the media of like terrorism and the same narratives of bullshit. Our ability to see that I feel is a testament to our, our devotion and dedication to seeing it within ourselves. But also too, there's an aspect of this that is like an energy capture. 
And so mm-hmm. what we're also seeing is this emergence of war porn. So on one hand, there's an aspect of me that's like, finally, people are seeing what the fuck is going on here. But then there's the other part of me that understands if this, if these images and if this wasn't serving the agenda, it would have been censored. And so there's this, there's this like uh, return on investment in a sense where you're educating yourself and now it becomes an energy capture to keep you fully like lost in emotional turmoil. And so I, I, I think it's it's going to be important for people to 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 feel into their own own energy and their own like is this feeding off of me right now like am I am I so wrapped up in all of these images three months later that now not only do I have PTSD but I'm being fed off of. Like something is feeding off of me. So the the social media aspect of bringing us to the front lines, it's like, it's kind of playing into the shadow aspect of it, of, of things feeding off of us. And, and then while also informing people and like. But like you said, then we, we perpetuate that cycle of, of spiritual warfare by attacking our neighbor for not speaking up, for not seeing the video the same way we saw it. Like, like that was another one, bro. I had brothers and from different perspectives sending me different, sending me videos. Like you need to watch this. You know what I'm saying? And it's uh, like that part, that part of it too. It's like, I guess what I want to ask you here is what is that practice? What is that meditation? You know, whatever, whatever it is. What is it for you? to come out of that space of the, of the turmoil and all the swirling on a social media and come back into the self. You know, I, I was, I was raised Muslim. So this may come from left field for, for the, the ones listening who are also raised Muslim, but man, it really helped me to tap into like Christ consciousness through this time. Christ is all over the, the Quran, bro. You know? Right. And Christ is all over those lands too. Mm. And, and it, and it really helped me to like literally just feel into the song of Christ consciousness, like listen to the song. What does it sound like? All right. It sounds vastly different than what I'm feeling right now. All right. Then just keep listening to the song, like feel this song in your heart. Like you can still have the utmost compassion while being ruthless in truth. If anything, that is very compassionate to be so firm in truth, right? So, but without being hateful in your heart, without being angry and vengeful and like, and dense, like you can feel it. And the thing is too, I do my people and all of humanity and myself and my family a disservice when I'm at war with myself, essentially. So if, if, if I'm at war with myself through the distortion of division, that all of this is separate from me, like I'm, I'm, I'm falling prey to this whole agenda, dude. Yeah. That's why this work is no longer, this is, these, this is not like some retreat from your life. This work is necessary to be on earth at this time. This is not a, this is not some leisurely thing that we're participating in. This work is absolutely necessary. Attendance is mandatory. (laughs) Yes. Show up. Show up. Attendance is mandatory because I'll tell you something, how, how this, and and I want to preface, this is a, is an ancient energy that is, that feeds off of hatred and fear and war and division that is, has been enslaving humanity for thousands of years. This thing, the way that it hijacks an individual is through the shadow is through the trauma. And so if you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your family moving forward, 
the greatest way to do so is through your shadow work. Yeah. Because as long as you're operating from an unconscious place, as long as you're letting the reactions control your life and the anger and the and the pride and the and and the the trauma take over you, we're witnessing what happens when that when when that is left to wreak havoc over over society. Yeah. And don't just, but don't just leave it in the shadows. We got love work to do too, man. This is a time to, to hold your babies closer, to call your friends and actually check in with them, to like actually take the time to check in with yourself. This is a time to cultivate love from that eternal source of love that exists within all of us. And to make sure that, you know, as a result of that shadow work, that we're clearing up that space for love to return. Yes. That's it for me. That's it. That's what my practice is. I'm like cuddling my babies longer, staying off the phone longer to do that cuddling and wrestling and playing. And I said this previously, but my oldest son, Noah, he's nine. And he asked me, he's like, he's like, is there, is there war happening? He's like, are people killing people? Just asking me about it. And so I'm just leaning into his questions. Where did, what do you think? What do you think about that? Should people kill people? You know? And like letting him guide his own curiosity and and allowing me to just be that reflection for him. Not because, because listen, the truth is daddy doesn't know the answer to where you're actually going, but I'm going to let you go there. And the important thing for me in that exchange was simply to be with him and allow him to ask me those questions, whether I had a, whether I had the answer or not. The, the point was for him to be able to speak freely and to explore his own curiosity. Um, and so I think for, for me, it, there's so much wisdom in the, in the simplicity of that surrender that I spoke to, right? The lack of resistance, um, because a part, a, a part of me as a dad's like, where did, where did you hear that? What, do you, what are you watching? Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Like, where's it coming from? And, it's, and then I get to drop all of that and go, no, it's, we're, it's, just, it's all here. It's all, it's all in, within him. It doesn't matter if there's an influence at school telling him about something or this or that, because it's all right here and right now. And the medicine is that he feels safe to bring it to dad. Mm-hmm. Boom. Like, these are those moments for me that really matter. You know what I'm saying? It's, the the ability that we have to cultivate so much love in our immediate uh, experience. That's it. That's the medicine to bring to the to our people and, and to bring home. That's it, man. And it's and it's through that love. Like if again, if if war and division and fear are going to be the and divide and conquer are going to be the the methods used then like it's going to be through love and and faith and surrender and and connection and union it, it, that's that's what's going to be the medicine of this time war will not be won with more war this isn't going to be this isn't going to be shifted on a collective level on a cellular level with like more hatred it's just going to feed it and it's just going to grow it and it's just going to perpetuate it and i think We, a a lot of us who've been carrying some deep ancestral trauma and grief around war and this kind of like bloodlust energy and stuff like this, like deep in our lineages, we've been given this opportunity, this portal has opened up, you know, and we've been feeling it within ourselves. I'm sure you've been feeling it within yourself of like, yo, who the fuck, what the fuck is going on here? And like, what do we do with that now? Do we, do we lose ourselves to these lower timelines and get attached to these things through this, this energy? Or do, does it provide us this opportunity for alchemy? No, and this to- is what we've been preparing for, bro. This is why right? we sat in all the ceremonies. This is why we chose to come in this life in the first, in the 47th place or how many lifetimes you live. This is the why. Right. This is the opportunity. Right. Is it possible for us to to even to shift into the consciousness of opportunity for for greater capacity for greater expansion uh, and to to further tap into love? Because this is one conflict of many, um, and that's a point that I think is appropriate to to call in. It's like there's war in the Middle East, there's war in the the in the Congo, 
you know, there's war in Eastern Europe. And like you said, it's, it's been happening. And so the opportunity for us is to do that shadow work now. And like I'm saying, I have, I, I do, I have IDF soldiers showing up in our weekends. We have men, we, and we have so many veterans. I'd love to say this because I had this big awareness come into my space recently. When I first got on my spiritual path, I went to Sweat Lodge. The, the chief, he's a Lakota man, his name is Hawk Moon. He's a Vietnam veteran. Another teacher I had, and, and many brothers that I have that I consider teachers, um, but specifically another mentor I had, also a veteran. And so I started, I started taking some, some stock. And I was like, God damn, I've learned so much wisdom from killers, mm. from people who have actually been in it, from pe- people who have been up close and personal. And, and, and one of them told me, like, has seen evil, has faced evil. And I, and I imagine that's inside and outside. And I just, I just want to acknowledge that even for those who maybe we, we, we hold them or disregard them in some way, these soldiers, these kids, these are children. You know what I'm saying? They're also children, these soldiers who are doing these things. But I just wanted to bring that, that piece that like I've, I've actually learned so much from, from people who have been in physical war and physical combat. And I think there's something to that. People ask me, where did I, where did this all begin? I tell them in the pits of hell. And so you are a veteran in your own right. When you're leading these men into their wholeness and into consciousness and into ceremony, it's because you've been living and existing in the pits of unconsciousness and what that means. And so it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me at all that like men who have been at war, both in the external and with themselves, veterans of war would be guides because this is another thing that Western media has bastardized and perverted is the notion of jihad. Mm. The real meaning of jihad is jihad and nefs, the holy war of the self. Mm. I've never heard this. This is interesting. The real jihad is not some guy in flip-flops from a cave with a RPG that CNN will tell you this guy declared jihad. No, the real meaning of jihad is the spiritual endeavor, the holy war of the self. And so we have a lot of men now who are coming up back from the war. You know, and and these are the men who are the guides of our times, the guardians and the protectors of truth in our time, who have who have faced the pits of evil and the shackles of the slave and unshackled themselves from this slave system that has told them you are unworthy unless you do X, Y, and Z, who have shamed them sexually, who have disconnected them from the feminine. Like there's been there's been a full blown war on men from the beginning. And so, yeah, when you tell me you've, you've been guided and, and learned a lot from veterans, it's like, yeah, you're one as well. <laughs> Not to take anything away from these men who have seen actual combat in this lifetime, you know, but I do, I do see, I do see you as a, as a spiritual vet in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that reflection. I think it's, I, I love this conversation because I've, I think even what we're doing now is just we're shining lights, shining light on those aspects of our humanity that some disregard stuff down and it comes out sideways. When we shine the light on it, when we acknowledge it, when we see, hey, this thing that you have, it's not so scary because guess what? We have it too. Like I've been there too, whatever that is. And so that's what I'm saying. Again, this work, men, brothers, sisters, if you're listening, it's required. This is required human work for our time. And, and a part of Sacred Sons in the beginning, a part of the mission was to make sure that the, the work was going to be diverse and that we were going to call in all men. And we have done that, truly. And we're, uh, we're global at this point. And we have brothers circling up under the banner of Sacred Sons. And there's a part of me that wonders 
Like, will there be a time? Is there already a time? Uh, two men on the, on the opposite side of a war, both sacred sons. Which one will lay down their weapons first? That's the prayer for me. It's like, can I see that vision where, where someone says no? Like, I'm not going to do this now. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that came for me, and I'm interested to hear your your reflection, is like, it's not a war. I, dude, I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's not a spiritual war, it's a spiritual mission. Yeah. That's what I wrote. Yeah. But even, even like with what we're discussing with Palestine and Israel, like it's not an actual war between two sides or between two equals. What is it? I mean, you're talking about a brutal apartheid, ethnic cleansing, ethno state, fascist ethno state that's like, yeah, you've got Israeli historians that will tell you even that this is, this is just the darkest aspects of existence on display to these indigenous people. Yeah. Leading them up from their homes, killing them, expelling them. You know, you have like the people in Gaza specifically, you know, 70% of them. And 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 I'm I want to preface this as well by saying you can be victimized but not be a victim. And so I'm not wanting to sing the they are victims anthem. I am just highlighting what is true and oftentimes we will get lost in calling this a conflict or a war and really what it is is it's a resistance against brutal occupation in essentially a fucking concentration camp and until we call it what it is and and acknowledge what we are looking at we can't like hold the totality of what what it what is so that's where it becomes difficult you know like who would lay their guns down first and it's like i'm extremely inspired by the amount of israelis and and jewish people that have reached out to me whether directly or indirectly and have been speaking against the zionist regime who have broken free from this intense programming, like the mountains they moved to be where they are today, to fight for liberation and freedom against their own, their own quote unquote people. It's there. It's heroic, dude. It's fucking heroic at the, like at the highest level. And there is no Palestinian liberation without Israelis, being liberated from that very mind control programming. Yeah. The, the liberation from that indoctrination is a piece of what I've, I feel like you're calling heroic. And I've seen that too. For many who grew up in Israel, like being indoctrinated into this is what the situation is. I love to hear the accounts for of people who get to go to Palestine to see it with their own eyes. I, I, I'm not clear on your story or your background, were you yeah. born in the U.S.? Were you born in Palestine? I was born in Canada, in Edmonton Canada. specifically. My grandfather was born in Ain Ghazal, in Haifa, in 1920. That's in Palestine. And the entire family in 1948, he wasn't there at the time. He was in Cairo at the time. He was 28 years old um, with, with my uncle and my aunt. This was before my father was born. But the entire family was essentially either expelled from the country or those who could stay and fight were killed. And his village and two other villages were known as the Little Triangle. And they were like the pain in the ass of the IDF at the time. And you can picture, bro, like just farmers and shepherds with outdated, like I think they 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 tallied it at like 80 handguns and rifles at the time. And they just like knew the land and knew, knew where to station themselves and stuff. And like, yeah, they were, they were 
real resistance fighters, even though they're just farmers, they're just proud men that we're not going to like lose everything like that. Um, and so, so the majority of my, my grandfather's family was exiled into refugee camps across the Middle East. And, um, the resistance in the blood goes deep, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing though, that needs to be spoken about that is absolutely crucial for any alchemical process is gratitude. And my grandfather, my grandfather became a, a highly acclaimed academic and scholar in the Middle East. And I share the same name as him and the same birthday as him. And he became who he died as because of everything that happened to his people and his family. And so for me, that does not get lost on me that like without the story of Palestinian liberation, without the Zionist being like th this whole thing happening and all this, like I would not be the man I am today. And so even though I'm fighting for my people, I'm a voice for my people, I'm a voice for liberation and all this stuff, it, again, it doesn't get lost on me the fact that this is part and parcel to crafting Eisen. So it's part of my hero's journey, dude. Like, what, like, can you hold that with reverence? Can you hold the lead with reverence, knowing that you need the lead as part of the alchemical process to create the gold? This is where I was going when I'm saying it's not necessarily spiritual war. It's, it's spiritual mission. Uh, because when we see it as a mission, as a quest, as, as the journey ever unfolding and not through the, just like the barbaric nature of like, of what a war is, because the truth of it is in a spiritual war, they actually can't attack us. It's like, there's a place where they actually can't attack us if we know ourselves. Mm. If you truly know yourself, they can't attack you. Mm. And that's what it is. And we need more, we need more and more brothers and sisters who are returning home to themselves. Yeah. Know thyself. Know thyself. And even if they attack your physical body, it's you're still you're still protected. This is and I like that, you know, it's 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 a spiritual mission. And a lot of us came here. I feel all of us came here with our own unique missions, you know? Yeah. It's been an interesting, it's been an interesting portal that this that this is all has opened up. I want to ask you this, because I had a few people reach out to me. And and I'll give you my kind of answer to what I said to them. But I had a few people reach out to me and be like, Sacred Sons is not doing enough. You know, and I'm sure you got a, a, a slew of those messages as well from every walk of life that you're not doing enough. Hey, when they say there's there's no sides, like, that's not true. There's a bunch of sides and they're all mad at us. <laughs> 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 no, I think... This is what I told my team, and this is what I really feel is like there, you, you'll never be able to do enough. If if I was doing things for other people, I, I will. It will never be enough. It will never be enough um, to react to that type of of energy, like the the the, the shutting down energy. You need to say more. You need to speak more. You need to do more. It's like for me, it's all happening. You and I are having this conversation right now as a result of everything that's happening. Um, could we have done it sooner? And could we have gone harder? Maybe. But that's not, that's not what was real for either of us. Okay, so that's just like a small example. But I did, I, I spoke out actually r really early because on October 7th, we were at our Sacred Sons Convergence. Maybe some of these brothers reached out to you, but we did. We had a prayer circle. We we had some tears. But at that time, it was heavily focused on what was happening to Israeli civilians because of October 7th. And so the prayers were, were largely in that direction because that's what was actually happening. Um, you know, as, as we were getting like news reports dripped in slowly as we're, as we're on a weekend. 
but not doing enough. Yeah, I'm I I'm personally I'm not like a social media social justice warrior. I I do believe that protests can happen and social media is an effective tool to be used. Um, but me personally, I'm here for the real intimate relationships. I'm here to really sit with my brothers and feel them, see them, hear them, grieve with them. And the impact that I know is is actually happening in Sacred Sons community with our real men who are in actual relationship, not just people who don't know each other on Instagram. I'm talking about these men have been in these these weekends, they 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 can be likened to going into battle together because we go so deep. And the bonds that are made when we go there and we really reveal all, all of ourselves to our brothers, there is something that happens with us. It just binds us. And so what I'm here and what I'm about and what the mission is and what I've been shown is like, that's what I'm here to focus on. I Instagram's not real. Like this, this shit is a tool. It's an illusion. It's a very helpful tool when, when communicating, you know, an idea, but it's not real. Yeah. It's not a, it's not real connection. And that's, that's, that's just where I, I am with it. I want to say something interesting about this just because it's, this thought came up to me. Listen, because of social media though, our daughter's born and one of the pressures or thoughts I'm having is, oh, I got to make a post. My daughter is one day old and I already had already deleted pictures of her. Just hear this. Interesting. Think, you know, we're taking all the baby pictures and, you know, we're, we lay down. It's, you know, it's baby time. It's a lot of it's a lot of rest and making food and things. But I, this idea that, like, I have to be so fast to broadcast this or that there's some kind of a, an external force that that's wanting. And it's it's love, too. It's not it's not a negative thing. But I'm just saying, like, my daughter is one and. I was already deleting pictures that were blurry. Like, I actually want less of that. I'm, I'm, my mission in this life is to become technologically indigenous. I, I love to talk. I love to speak. I love to be in person. I love to have my energy felt. I love to feel energy. And it doesn't necessarily light me up to get into it online. I think that takes away from my energy. So as, as a founder of Sacred Sons, like, listen, when the Maui fires happened, this is really impacting our brothers on the ground. Men are going in, doing doing work from day one. Like, we're going to talk about it. We're going to put energy behind it. We're going to raise money for our brothers and their families, things like this. But that's not, it's not political. Those are our brothers. These are people we care about. This is a place that we hold dear. The doing more is more, that, that energy is reactionary. And what typically happens is most people put their foot in their mouth, including me. So I'm not going to be one to, to like protest on the internet and speak up for this or that, because I, like you said, I think that is more of a part of the game that's, that's taking from our energy, that's siphoning off of our love with fear than it's worth. Yeah. And so it's like this, if you want to see me, come get with me, you know where <laughs> we'll be, the calendar's out there, brothers come in person, and this is where... This is where it is real. This is where the magic happens. This is where relationships flourish and thrive and brothers get pushed to the edges of their own curiosity, comfort, and confrontation. I think all men need this. I know I needed it. I wouldn't be doing this if it didn't fill me up in some way. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just it. And, and... I do love our videos. I love watching those Sacred Sons videos online and putting that love out and broadcasting it. Um, so it's it's a double edged sword that tool. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 I appreciate. What you. do you think? Well, <laughs> well, first I, I appreciate you you speaking on it, and and second of all, like what what I've said is and how I've responded to some of these guys is like first of all you probably feel helpless, which is why you're like, why isn't this guy speaking? Because if you had tangible action to take that would make a difference, you would be doing it and not looking at another man why he's not doing it. So 
you you focusing on somebody else's lack of action may just be kind of like a bit of a trauma response of feeling helpless in that moment yeah. and thinking that well if 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 adam said something that you know that so much would be shifted and it's like okay the other thing too is if this is a war on consciousness right this is a spiritual war in in war it's not that I like playing with this analogy because it steps me forward into this like highest level of, of gamesmanship in this game. But if this is a war on consciousness, there's going to be the artillery, the cavalry, the air force, the Navy, the, this, that there's different fronts that are happening. And I don't think everybody's going to be as equipped to, speak on certain things or to show up in a certain light and like so everybody's playing their role perfectly yeah yeah oh this was the other point this was the other point let's not become the fucking monsters we're exposing because now think of the energetic similarity between me forcing adam to speak on this like i've become a tyrant if you want to speak on something, it's got to come from within you. If this is, if you feel this is a fight for liberty, for example, and this is like what you want to speak on and how you want to show up and express and articulate, and it has to come from within you. It can't come from somebody being like, you need to do this. Like, dude, this is what we're unraveling is that you need to do this. But I'm, my question for them is, are you listening? Because I've been speaking on it the whole time before this conflict, before the other conflict. And dude, I got DMs from people that were like, you should speak up about this. And I would send them a video that I actually did because I did post about this calling for an end to the genocide. And I'm like, here, I'm like, I did speak up. And they're like, oh, sorry, I, I didn't even uh, really look. I just, and I'm like, well, if you listen to five podcasts in a row, I talk about it every week. Like, are you listening? Or are you looking for someone or to take that anger like you were speaking about earlier? Right. Right. Are you listening? Right. Because my whole life is one. My whole stance is one. And so like, whether it's this conflict, COVID, which I also got into a lot of trouble for, you know, for speaking out about COVID on podcasts and things, you know, and or not taking the stance of somebody that, that thought I should think the same way as them. It's like, no, man, my mission is still brotherhood. It didn't change. There's actually nothing that can happen in this world that can that could change the piece of this mission that's called Sacred Sons. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, brotherhood is the medicine. If you want it, come and get it. That's that's how it is. That's how I've actually seen it work. I've never seen it work with people fighting on social media. <laughs> It's just a leak of energy, man. A massive leak of energy. <laughs> Nobody, like, if you're yelling at somebody to wake up, then you're the one who's asleep. If you're trying to force somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Say that again. If you're yelling at somebody to wake up, <laughs> then you are the one that is asleep. Oh, that's it right there. You know? like Because truly, like, think of it. You can't. Forcefully, forcefully shake somebody to wake up. That awakening has to come from this like inner state of of awareness that just these layers of awareness <sighs> added on, and they start to see and like and remember and 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 reclaim. And it's not it's not going to come from me forcing somebody to speak on a subject because I feel helpless. Yeah. As well. Everything, and I'm going to get some flack for this because it's happening to my own fucking people, but everything is playing out perfectly for our grandest awakening. And I'd want to bring it full circle kind of back to our miscarriage. Look, God, not the old world God of like your father in the sky judging you for your sins, but God in terms of the supreme mathematician, the algorithm of perfection that runs this entire game. Like even in the darkest of nights when we lost, quote unquote, lost our daughter, 
feeling into this algorithm of perfection that is woven through all my experiences and every event that plays out in my life. And so now can I also witness a genocide of my own people and feel this perfection woven through this? And it doesn't mean I stay silent. If I'm being called to speak, I'm going to speak. If I'm being called to speak truth and shine a light on what I see, I'm going to do that. Can I still hold in my heart and embrace that everything is under God's umbrella of creation, which means there are no mistakes. Everything is playing its role perfectly for our grand awakening. Can we feel that? Can we honor that? Can we revere that? Can we look in our lives and, and see that algorithm of perfection and apply that now? and not get lost in the storyline and start blaming other people for not doing enough and not being enough and this and that and like and really just like perpetuating our own disempowered feelings of helplessness i think the only way that we can truly see clearly uh to that level is when we grieve is when we move the energy is when we allow ourselves um maybe to be seen in it but certainly to to 100% feel all of the sensations. If I think if nothing else, this is how life is happening through us is, is through our sensations and through the, the emotions that we feel. To neglect them is, is not working. It's not working. Just yeah. look, just look. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. That's why the work we're doing is so important the spaces you're creating for these men and also too, like the reason you guys are so profound in what you do is because it's so needed. And so you will be supported by unseen hands to bring in all the men that are meant to come into ceremony and to, to, to reclaim pieces of themselves through sacred sun specific signal. Yeah. Like you guys will be supported on this mission. And everything that is not in support of this mission will get shaken off. Like we don't even have to try anymore. Yeah. I want to wrap this, this particular piece of the conversation, acknowledging the pain, the suffering, but also the, the love, the connection, maybe just the silence is enough, honestly. I'm coming off of uh, five days of very little sleep, lots of cooking food, and lots of uh, oxytocin. <laughs> so it's really, it's funny. It's I'm even when you're saying that people are mad. I just want to say like, oh, if you're mad at me, I'm so sorry. If you're mad at me, I'm so sorry that you feel mad at me. You know what I'm saying? If you love me, I'm so sorry that you love me, and I'm so happy that uh, you found your your way to this conversation before I move on, is there any piece that you want to close with? You said so many beautiful things in there. I'd, I'd really have a, a sense of you from the resistance of your grandfather that you shared. I felt like just that, that piece of your journey uh, is so illuminating on why you're here and how you are like, how you are right on time for these times. Yeah. Yeah, it's just been, I chose to come in as Palestinian for a reason, many reasons. And I'm just starting to really uncover them, especially this year. And it allots me a lot. Um, one of those things is the ability and the duty and responsibility to speak and use my voice for these people who are really voiceless. Um, but just a lot of gratitude, you know, for, I felt alone my whole life, man through this full process like and now you see millions and millions of people across the world from all walks of life like marching and rocking flags and scarves and and feeling with these people and and it's been i think it's it's important sometimes we get caught up in um again who's not speaking or who's not doing enough 
or on, on all this kind of distracting stuff. But it's important to see like how many people can hear now. How many people are have the eyes to see? Yes. Ears to hear and the open hearts to receive and the devotion and the and the courage and and who are awake and are here and are beating their hearts, their chests, and like let's focus on holding this higher vision together. Together. That's it. Yeah. And that togetherness, it comes from the source of of all togetherness, sacred union. This is something that I see you speak about often and it's on display in, in your relationship. I love, you know, the pieces that you said earlier, because it's like, I, I understand it's not all perfect and it's not about perfection in these relationships or even in sacred union. It's about us showing up for it. It's about our presence. And so is there any piece that you would like to share with us, you know, around sacred union? Again, I believe the, the men's work is here for a purpose uh, and that is to prepare us to come back into sacred union with the right. divine feminine. And so, you know, what's your perspective? Why, wh why is this something that has also been a calling for you? Because it's been my greatest teacher. Ha! Yes. Yes. Truly, truly, man. It's humbled me and brought me down to my knees many, many times. It's frustrated me to the point of wanting to put my face through a wall. Like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been my guru. It's been my guru. And so yes. I'm, I'm just a humble messenger <laughs> of it. It's yeah. It's, it's made me into the man I am. It's matured me. There's, there's a level of, of maturity that's required to be able to really hold a sacred union and something that's been really important in my teachings to these men is, is understanding the role that unworthiness has played in shackling us to a fallen system that ultimately has us seeking for the pieces of ourselves outside of ourselves. And so what happens is we get into these relationships and we start to extract from our partners, we start to extract from love. Love becomes what can I get instead of what can I become and what can I pour into? Right, right. And we're recoding, we're recoding love, we're, we're recoding what it means to be whole in relationship. And so for me, sacred union is the very foundation of everything because it starts from within me. The union between my higher self and my shadow, the union between my masculine and my feminine, the union between heaven on earth, this is occurring within me. Sacred union is, is everything, is my wholeness, is my divinity. And so now I'm able to like live this in the external world with Shanti, my wife, and, and co-create with her. Because again, if, if divide and conquer is the strategy, then union will be the medicine. Mm. Right. So if divide and conquer is the tactic being used against us, then union will be the medicine. And so we see this even in, in, in all the men's work we do, right? It's no longer about finding your worth from the car you drive and the women you sleep with and the vacations you go on and the money you make and, and what you can do. It's like this intrinsic wholeness, your worthiness is defined through the eyes of the all seeing. It's not defined through the eyes of mortal men telling you how you should be in this slave system. And so we're reclaiming all of it back. And this, the, the work with union, it's, and, and unions have been attacked, whether through feminism, whether through attacks on masculinity to destabilize the home. This is the fractal. This is the seed of all creation. And I've said this before, this system, this fallen system that survives off of consumption, the, th the greatest threat to it is creation. And so that's why there's been this attempt and agenda to destabilize unions. Because when you and your woman come together, look at what you guys have created. Look at what has joined us Earthside in the last five days. 
let alone all the love that you guys are able to like pour into everything you create the way you're able to raise your kids. Like we have no clue what these kids are capable of becoming through the love that you two are anchoring in together. We, we, we can't even fathom it, man. And so that's why this is, this work is so important. The, the work with unions is so important. And, um, we're seeing a lot of them come together as people are like coming into consciousness and doing the work and, and all this stuff. We're seeing a lot of these unions come together, but really it's in their ability to navigate a lot of shadow work that is compromising their ability to stay together. And that's what I've seen is like, it's, it's one thing to come into union and it's another thing to now face all your shit. Yeah. Yeah. For me, sacred union, the, the defining characteristic of sacred union is devotion mm. because through it all, it's, it's the devotion uh, to that union, to those creations that is sacred. It's because of the devotion. And there was a woman who posted on one of our, one of our videos saying like, you know, why do why do these men leave? You know, because they're, they're witnessing it and they're seeing it out there and it's not perfect again. What I've created is, is so beautiful and so precious and sacred to me. And, it's, and I know it's not perfect and I know I'm not perfect and I've got a long way to go. Um, and so where I'm going is deeper into my devotion, mm. into my like knowingness of this is who I am. These are my people and I'm here for this. No matter what, come on, son. It has to be like that. It's, it has to be this, this no matter what, this is it, all in approach. And the reason why men leave is because they were left. It's because they were abandoned. They didn't have a father stick around. So they figure, hey, I think I'm not going to stick around because that's the pattern. These cycles, they're playing out time and time again. And it's not about breaking chains all the time, guys. It's about like bonding hearts in love. You know, so so sometimes it's like, oh, I want to I, I want to root out the alcoholism. I'm going to break this chain. It's like, no, I'm going to deepen into my presence. I'm going to be here so much that my kids don't even question whether or not I'm coming home. That will never be a question. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's a different game out here. And the and the reason is, is because I need it, too, because I long for it. And I know the longing in my own upbringing in my own childhood my own experience and i also know i also know the sacred union within myself you know i i feel that connection to source to god i have since i was a child and never i have never been without it and so if god is devoted to me in that way then i'm going to devote myself to god's creation through our sacred union and i've never experienced a greater love there's nothing else. Hannah and I, if you're into human design, we're nine and oh, nowhere to go. It's all right here. If we can't figure it out, I won't be able to figure it out anywhere else. It's all here. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my approach to to sacred union. First, that's something that we Shanti and I would say during because the first year of our union was like tumultuous, like these two wild energies trying to find cohesion <laughs> like and then we'd like go again to get with and then it would just go crazy again and it took a while and um the one phrase we'd come back to is there's nowhere else to go like there was a <laughs> there was a deep knowing girl I, i've shared this story several times like the times where i started questioning shit and like in my own shadow and oh my god this is this is torturous and whatever and i'd sit and i'd just connect and and i'd ask my soul am i supposed to be here and the answer right away was yes. I'm like, fuck, I'm not seeing clearly. Go back, go back to the drawing board, go back to prayer, Come, like you're not, you're, you're not seeing clearly. And so there is nowhere to go. But one thing you, one thing you said that was so beautiful is like the, the core of it, the core is devotion. The core of it is devotion. And what I felt when you said that was this man has truly 
bonded and come into union with his divinity. There is no separation between him and God, and he can now offer that level of devotion within his union. And to tie it into what I was saying in terms of this is the fractal, this is the seed of creation. What hit me is like this, the seed of creation is the mirror image of your creator. And so your union becomes essentially God to you. Yes. Like the love that you have together, the life that you're co-creating together, it becomes, there's no separation between that and God. And so the devotion you pour into your woman, the devotion you pour into your union, this is, it's prayer. It's a form of prayer. Yes. The living prayer. The living prayer. It's the living prayer of our ancestors because the other thing that I know in my bones and my DNA, we named resistance as one for you, but many of my ancestors couldn't be together. Right. Just to simply be together. They were not allowed that in their lifetime. And so I want to reclaim that togetherness. I want to reclaim it as a birthright and as a, as an, as an honorable thing. Uh, if there's, if there's anything and listen, the relationships are very hard. Everyone, they, they take so much presence, attention, compassion, and, and the work as we've been talking about. And you're right, man. You're right. It is the creation is God. And that's where, that's where the deep service piece comes from. Right. Because it, it, and for me, it's like I'm in service to my children. There is no separation between our souls. You know, this is, this is, this is all in. And so that energy for me, I want, that's what, that's the energy I want to be in. I'm, I'm here for the togetherness. I'm here for the all in and, and for the oneness of self. Um, and let's, let's close on this piece because I love it. And you're like, you're like, yo, anybody preaching, we're all one. And I'm not saying we're all one. My, my biggest statement last year was all life is sacred. And I stand by it. All life, all life. And oneness and duality both exist in this world. But just, just quickly, you know, like you, you were talking about this notion of, of, of us all being one and how that may be a spiritual bypass. Yeah. Is that something that's, that's real for you or something that, that, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's, I wonder, I'll just pose this question. I wonder if certain infiltrations in the new age community have been implanted in order to dilute the infinitely unique essence of our souls. And so I know that I am an individuated expression of source consciousness and that I came here to be me. And that, yes, we can zoom all the way out to the one vibration through which we all emanate from, but let that not muffle our authentic expression. And oneness, the importance of seeing that it like, there's a part of me that believes unity consciousness is a bit of a psyop. Mm. Yeah. I understand. There's, there's been a bit of an agenda with, with new age spirituality to castrate and make passive the awakening consciousness. And so as we awaken to ourselves, you know, there's, there's an importance to maintain that individuality and that, that sacred fire within us, that fire of spirit. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because we are interconnected and all life is sacred, but you came here to be Adam. Yeah. I, I feel like there's an opportunity or a, um, a potential for 
us to lose what makes us special by mm. wanting to become nothingness. And I think we have as well, I don't know if you ever played like first person shooter games, like Call of Duty or any of these, like any of these games. Or I grew up on Duck Hunt. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even have Call of Duty. I grew up on Duck Hunt with a Nintendo. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> is that first person shooter? Is that count? I mean, I guess, yeah. <laughs> my, have, like, honestly, my last in my last video yeah. game was like uh NBA Live 2012 or something like that. Okay, that's not too far. Not that's too, too long ago, but still, all right. All right. <laughs> but, but what I'm trying to say is like we have the ability to toggle in and out. And so I have the ability to come into my first person mode to play yes. this game. Yes. And I have the ability to like zoom all the fucking way out to oneness with everything. Right. And, and how can I like dance with the contrast and the, the spaciousness between oneness and infinitely unique? Because I came here connected to oneness, an aspect of oneness and having an infinitely unique experience. So I didn't, so, so I see that as like, can I continue to be the bridge between the two? So I think that, that that's maybe where I'll leave that off is like my ability to toggle back and forth and dance between the two. Yeah. For me, there's, there's also this kind of thought like, well, like it's all God and God's got us. So like, we're good. It's like, Hey, just so you know, God sent you here to play your role and to actually bring your energy into reality. So leaving it in the spiritual 5d ethereal realm and not making it practical, not making it tangible, not making it felt here in this realm is a disservice to God. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to make it, we have to bring it into this reality. That That's what we, I feel, are designed to do. And whatever our mission is, our soul's intention is, we have to actually do it with our, with our hands. We're going to have to get our hands dirty, building bridges to the new earth. We can't just leave it up to chance or to oneness for it all to unfold on its own. We have to be in the game. Yes. This is kind of my way of thinking about it. It's like, yes, yes to the one that's, yes, God separated into a million, billion, bazillion, trillion parts, and we're all going to find our way back to oneness, but we actually got to put the shoes on and start walking. <laughs> and at the end of the day, too, it's interesting you use that analogy, start walking, because to walk, you need, like, there's a level of separation, and we came here in the in form to learn about energy through separation. And so that, that I think should not get lost on us is that like, we came here to learn through separation. I have this identity that forms your daughter. Now, as slowly as the months go on, you're going to see this identity start to form. She's going to start to learn through separation, mom and dad. And it's not bad. That's how she's learning about energy through the separation of herself and it right now. That's how we're, 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 we're playing in this game. And, and a lot of it is like not getting lost in the identity, right? And allowing ourselves to continuously evolve. But I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't come here to be nothingness. You know, I enjoy myself. I enjoy my quirks. I enjoy who I'm becoming. I enjoy the, the constant learning and meeting myself anew because I think what, that where where a lot of the friction and and disembodiment comes comes into the spiritual community is like wanting to kill my ego, wanting to become nothingness, wanting to to lose myself entirely to oneness, and like so. Then every time I come up against my identity, I'm going to perceive that as bad because that's that I, I shouldn't be who I am. So there's like it's all love, man. Love yourself. <laughs> Love your humanness, love the human, love your avatar, love your identity, love the the infinitely unique expression of source consciousness. Yeah. Love and love the contrast. Can we hold contradiction within ourselves?
can we actually be with it and allow that to be okay? Our own separateness, our own togetherness, whatever it is. I'm about to go back and sniff this baby's head, get my, uh, get my oxytocin fix. <laughs> I mean, this is, this Hello. is a part, this is a part of the way. These are, these are the gifts that a uh, creator has bestowed upon us. So I'm going to continue partaking in that joy. I'm about to fill a crock pot with some beef stew. What are you going to do today? What's your next move? Go meet up with the wife. We're going to, we're out in Texas right now visiting her for the holy days. So we're going to take uh, her son out for dinner. I leave tomorrow to go visit my family, my parents in Toronto. So it's kind of a, a farewell to Texas. For I don't think you're moving to Texas or Toronto. My guess would be more like Dubai, but I'm just saying. I wonder where you guys are going because I see the setup in, in Costa Rica is beautiful. Yeah. I say you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> where are they going? We will wait. We'll find out on the interwebs. Eisen, thank you so much, brother, for for coming here and for, for being with us and for sharing yourself, for sharing your gifts. I appreciate you as a voice in the greater community. Sacred Sons is a part of a tapestry that we are weaving alongside all of the conscious communities out here, all of the men's organizations, all of the, even the at-home men's circles. Even if you're in a book club, we're with you. We're all together in this mission. And so I appreciate you being a voice amidst the turmoil. And one who many people told me, Adam, you got to talk to Aizen. I already knew that. I already knew we were going to be talking anyways, but I'm glad that spirit brought us through in this way. I'm so grateful, man, for you opening up the space for for hearing that signal and uh, for for bridging bridging this together and and much love to everybody listening, all the sacred sons and all the men doing the work out there. You are so so appreciated with all the heavy lifting that you are doing and everything you are clearing and everything you are reclaiming. And like he said, devotion is the key. Stop and nothing. Attendance is mandatory. We chose to be here now. Let's fucking go. There is no stopping this movement, this wave, the ripple effects will echo through eternity. Let's go, baby. Let's go. New year, new now, new me. Let's go. Why are you here, brothers? If you're here, if you listen this far, join Eisen, join Sacred Sons. Tell me the, the container you have. So I've got Fellowship as our online men's group, and then King's, King's Council is our in-person emergence. I'm excited. I'll, I'll throw this out there. I'm taking a group of men into the upper Amazon jungles of Ecuador this March for nine days. We're doing some deep work. We're sitting with grandmother with the Quichua tribe and um, it's going to be an experience of a lifetime. But yeah. Beautiful. Join Aizen on this quest. If you're a seeker, I mean, listen, this is, this is the way. This is the way. I know that if you listen this far, you're feeling it. Whew. All right. I'm about to get back in dad mode. Aizen, thank you so much, my brother. I, I look forward to uh, inviting you out in person and to having you, you know, at some of our events. And I know as you're bringing Sacred Union, I'm not going to fully reveal it here, but we are also bringing together the masculine and feminine in this year of 2024. Would love for you and your beautiful wife to be a part of it. So more to come on that. More to come on that. That's a little seed plant for everyone. With that, Aizen Abbas, Adam Jackson, Sacred Sons, Route Family. Peace. Peace.